Assalamu alaikum. So let's do an example to emphasize uh, the concept that we just developed uh, that we worked on in the previous video. So I have this rod. Uh, there's a uh, load being applied to it at the free end and there's a torque. Uh, there's a height given. It's a solid rod. Um, I just realized that I should give you a uh, I should give you some data on the radius. So let's say, okay, so let's say it's not solid, let's say it's hollow, and let's say the outer diameter is 220 millimeters, and let's say the inner diameter is 180 millimeters. Okay, what I want to do is analyze two points. I want to analyze point A and point B, okay, as, as such. Uh, we need the triad, so let's say this is the z-axis, let's say this is x, this is y, um, and that should work out, so that, that looks okay. If I'm, looking at, if I'm looking at point A, so what I want to do, the first thing I want to do is draw a square around point A, and this represents my stress element. Now, where does this stress element lie? Well, let's look at our triad, it corresponds to the x-z-axis. So I'm going to go ahead and draw my box, my element. This is element A, and we have the x-axis going here. We have the z-axis going directly upward. Now, because of this torque, there's going to be a reactive torque at the bottom going in the other direction. And because of this shear force, or this applied load, there's going to be a reactive load going in this direction. Okay, so let's say 4.8 kilonewtons and my torque is 7.2 kilonewton meter and like we discussed uh, if I look at the reactive torque my shear stress direction should be here and when I look at my applied torque which is on top uh, and when you make the free body di diagram of the bar and you cut it somewhere above point A you'll see that the shear stress direction should be in this way and that's how shear stress works so we're putting both concepts together and uh, uh, the bottom shear stress is going this direction, the top shear stress is going that direction, and I'll, all I need to do is uh, make its complementary uh, stresses. Now this guy is going to be tau xz, and the element is oriented properly, so we can safely say that this is uh, a positive shearing stress. And uh, that's it. There's not going to be a shear stress due to the uh, 4.8 kilonewton force which will cause bending and but there will be uh, axial stress now the axial stress would be oriented in which direction well look, let's look at the bending the bending is happening uh, it's going to happen about the negative x-axis right so that means the rod is going to distort in the yz plane and point a is going to uh, have a tensile stress of sigma z so this should be sigma z and that would just be equal to my moment which would be 4.8 kilonewtons times 10 to the 3 newtons into the distance so that's 6.6 .6 meters that's my moment multiplied by the radius all right, for, for the uh, uh, maximum distance, it's going to be the outer diameter divided by 2, so that's 110, so that's 0 0.11 meters, divided by I for this guy. Okay, so that's, that's sigma z, and that's what my stress element should look like for, for point A. Okay, let's look at point B. So let me get rid of this guy. Point B is on the side, and point B corresponds to the neutral axis where this guy is bending. Okay, and uh, so if we look at point B, let's go ahead and draw our plane. That's the first thing we should do. And this plane corresponds to the YZ plane. Right, so this is where it cor corresponds to. So I'm going to go ahead and draw my stress element B and this guy is going to correspond to my Y 
Z thing. Okay, now again the reactive torque is in that direction so my shearing stress should be here and according to the applied torque on the top my shear stress is in this direction I'm just gonna go ahead and draw that out so that looks like positive shearing stress again uh, let's look at the shearing stress for the uh, let's look at the shearing stress being developed because of the bending moment and now the bending moment, well, I have this force being applied at top and, and there's going to be a reactive force at the bottom. So I know the shearing stress follows the same direction as my applied load. So on top, it's going to follow the same direction. On the bottom, because the shear force is equal and opposite, because that's the reaction, it's going to be in this direction. So my shearing stress, due to the uh, bending moment, follows the same direction as my... Uh, shearing stress due to torsion that means in for element b and there is no axial stress for element b because the it lies on the neutral axis where the flexural stress is zero my element b first of all is in pure shear and uh, the other thing about element b is that my shearing stresses uh, due to torsion and due to the flexural stress are being added up due to the bending moment are being added up and that's positive so this is positive ta uh, yz we could say or zy same thing if it's isotropic and that's stress element b so once you get the stress element and you make them properly and now hopefully the sign conventions are clear uh, I'm gonna ask for the principles uh, and after the principles I'm gonna ask for uh, you to draw the 3D Moore circle, find the m overall maximum shearing stress, is it in plane, out of plane, and uh, probably give you a failure criteria to play around with in this problem. So a typical combined loading problem should look like that. Um, guys, be sure you know how to draw these elements, okay? Be sure you know how to draw these stress elements. This is the basis, this is the starting point of how you solve combined loading problems. Uh, and uh, good luck on your final exams. I hope these videos help. Uh, I hope you have an awesome Moms 2 pa paper. If you're still confused, please uh, stop by my office Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, even Wednesday morning. I'll try to help out as much as possible. Uh, but please study as much as possible. Be prepared. Get a good night's rest. And uh, inshallah ta'ala. I hope uh, everybody gets good grades. I'll see you around. Allah Hafiz.